Hi folks, thank you so much for joining me today. This is All About Candles. My name is Greg. I am your self-proclaimed Canadian candle connoisseur, and this is my very first video ever. And so I thought the best thing to do for a first video on a candle channel was just a good old fashioned Bath and Body Works haul. There's a lot of stuff out there now that people are really excited about. Bridgerton, the wedding collection, and they had a $13.95 candle sale over the weekend. So, you know, I was up in the store twice. Let's just get right into it. When it comes to Bridgerton, the only one that I picked up was the Danbury shortbread. Um... I like the way this candle looks. It's pretty. What I don't like is that when you take the lid off, there's such a big space discrepancy with that sort of text box label. I kind of understand why they did that because, you know, if you've got the lid on it, it looks centered. But I already know that when I'm burning it, it's going to kind of annoy me that it's not centered. Um, you've got the thin core wicks on this candle, so it's probably going to burn pretty hot and vicious. And the scent notes on it were whipped vanilla, almonds, and sugar crystals. And so what this reminds me of is a less severe version of almond croissant, which came out in like the first wave of spring candles. But this one seems a little bit less cloying. Um, it feels like there was a candle that came out last year called Hometown Sugar Cookies. And it smells a little bit like that mixed with a sugared snickerdoodle. You know, very typical bakery sweet gourmand fra fragrance. I love, I love nutty fragrances. And so it's the, it's the nutty almondness of this candle that made it a purchase for me. I think it's really nice. I think I probably won't burn this until it's like fall. But anyways, I went into the store and I, you know, went straight to this Bridgerton collection to check everything out. I don't know anything really about the show. All I know is that my boyfriend made this picture, my like avatar, like profile picture on the Netflix account. And I saw a clip of the show back when it first came out. And it was very like teenager, Gilded Age, Victorian era. And there was like a high society girl like doing the rumpy pumpy with like a farmer out behind the barn. <laughs> it kind of reminded me of like the OC type of vibe. I don't know, just not my type of show. Maybe if it was my type of show, I would be more excited about all the Bridgerton candles. But once I actually got into the store and smelled them, it was a little bit of a letdown. And I don't want to rain on anybody's parade, but Wisteria Garden really smelled kind of like a weak repackage. Um, and then Queen Charlotte's Tea was the one I thought I was going to like the most. I was hoping that it would be like a creamy Earl Grey tea, like a traditional English tea. But instead it was like a sweet iced tea, which I thought was kind of a weird choice. It was the same iced tea note that I feel like they use in White Tea and Sage, Iced Dragon Fruit Tea, um, Sweet Tea and Lemonade. It was like that tea note, but just isolated and kind of watered down. And so that was a pass for me too. And then there was Bridgerton Study, which kind of smelt more like a fall candle to me and just didn't grab my attention. So I passed on that one as well. And then I really thought the worst one of all was the one that they're making the biggest deal out of, the um, diamond of the season. Uh, it's got the fancy glass lid and the whole body care collection, but it was kind of just smelling to me like a weak peach bellini with a bit of floral thrown in there. Um, I gotta say that my least favorite Bath and Body Works candles are probably the sort of synthetic, fruity, effervescent notes that they do. And so that one was a hard pass too. And so if you had told me that the one I was gonna end up buying was gonna be the Danbury shortbread, I would have laughed, but it was the one that I liked the most and I kind of felt like I had to get one. Um, apparently Bath and Body Works is gonna be doing a lot of collaborations with Netflix over the next year or two. Um, I've got a sneaky suspicion that the next one we might see 
could be when the new season of Wednesday comes out. I think it's coming out towards the end of the year, probably around Halloween time. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see a Wednesday Bath and Body Works collaboration, you know? They might just like repackage Ghoul Friend and Vampire Blood and call it Wednesday Adams. I don't know. But that's kind of my prediction as far as these collaborations go. I can't say that I'm obsessed um, with the idea of them doing these collaborations because it feels like less attention is going to actually get paid to the quality of the scent. But whatever. Bath and Body Works is pretty consistent in always having some good candles that I'm going to want. I mean, I bought like a dozen this weekend, so it is what it is. Um, let's move on to Pink Lilac and Vanilla. I love this packaging, except for the except for the um, sort of texty box here that says, I love you, mom. I love this pink lid. Oh my goodness. It's really beautiful wrap around label. But the fact that it's clearly meant to be a Mother's Day present and it says, I love you, mom, on it, it's kind of a turnoff for me because I do love my mom, but she ain't getting this candle. Like she would not appreciate it the way I do. Oh my God, it's gorgeous. This is fresh lilac bouquets, dewy greens, and vanilla blossom. And I buy one of these every year. Um, the last couple of years, it's been a Mother's Day theme, which is fine, except, you know, when I'm burning this candle, I know I'm gonna be looking at it thinking to myself, mm, I should probably call my mom and tell her I love her. <laughs> I don't know. Mmm, I love it. It's definitely, everyone's familiar with the fresh cut lilacs from Bath and Body Works. It's that lilac note, except this is balanced with like the vanilla blossom. And it's not a gourmand vanilla at all. It's like a floral vanilla, which is what I really love about it. And it's just so smooth and creamy. You can smell like the smooth texture that it has and I love it. Like I said, I get one every year. Um, it looks like it's probably the exact same formula as last year, which is white wax with these really thick ropey wicks. Um, the one that I bought last year performed really well up until about the last not great performance for the last third of the candle. I remember putting it under a candle lamp to get the last third of fragrance out of this one. But when I love a fragrance this much, I don't really care if the last third of the candle doesn't perform great. I have no problem putting it in a candle crock or under a heat lamp to just suck all of the fragrance out of it. <laughs> Anyways, pink lilac and vanilla. Continuing with the sort of vanilla theme, I also picked up the Vanilla Cloud candle. Another really beautiful floral wraparound on this one. Um, and it has got thin core wicks. So it's probably gonna burn like a mofo. Need a lot of trimming on that guy. Um, I do love vanilla. Uh, since I was a child, um, the kind of ice cream that I always wanted to get at the ice cream store was just good old plain vanilla. All the other kids thought I was a loser. My mom thought I was weird because all I ever wanted was vanilla. And I love Bath and Body Works vanilla blends. Um, I love mahogany vanilla. I love vanilla balsam. And this one, this one is nice. The scent notes are airy freesia, vanilla cream, and blonde woods. Freesia can smell a little bit fruity sometimes, um, and I get a bit of a fruity, almost strawberry, but not quite kind of vibe from this. A little bit of a Gingham Gorgeous vibe. I don't know if anybody else was a big fan of that candle, but I was. And this has the vanilla note that, there was one of the candles that came out in the Neutrals line last year called Vanilla and Musk. It reminds me a little bit of that. And also it's got sort of a marshmallowy note that reminds me a bit of Marshmallow Fireside. But instead of being balanced with a sort of smoky flavor, 
This one is balanced with a sort of airy floral. Mmm. I do like this one. I'm not sure it's going to perform super great. Um, I'm guessing that the throw and strength on this one is probably going to be around a 6 or a 5.5, but I liked the fragrance enough to want to try one out, and it was a new fragrance. And so I like to be a little bit more open-minded sometimes. If I don't fall in love with something in the store, you never know what it's gonna be like burned. I'll probably be burning this one pretty quickly. So yeah, Vanilla Cloud, nice. I like it. Now, uh, to move away from the vanillas a little bit, um, I also repurchased a candle, which was the number 33. Um, so they released this with the 42. And the 42 one was the one I thought I was going to like the most. Sweet cream, fresh cinnamon, and vintage leather. And this one, I've burned this one. And I did like it a lot. But I actually ended up liking this one more. I know a lot of people think it's kind of weird. And it is kind of weird. Because what grabs my attention the most in Bath & Body Works is something that's different. Something that stands out. Something that's new. That's what really excites me. And I've already burned one of these, and I loved it. The scent notes are espresso beans, warm vanilla, and lemon peel. Now, the reason why they released them like this without proper names is because they were doing like a, they were doing like a marketing scheme, like vote for what you think this should be called, and they're going to come back apparently renamed by whatever the public democratically voted on. Um, I think that they decided this one was going to be called Affogato and Lemon, but I'm not positive. I'm expecting it's going to come back in the fall, but this smells to me kind of like a special coffee. You know, when you get a coffee with liqueur in it. Not a Bailey's coffee, obviously. A coffee that has like maybe a Monte Cristo or a Spanish coffee. It reminds me of that because it's got a bit of a citrusy vibe to it. And this one performed really well too. It burned really clean for me all the way down to the bottom and was like at least a 7 or a 7.5 for strength and throw in a medium space. And so for me, this was a big winner and I wanted to go back and get another one. And so I did. I really like this. Yeah, and I feel like the more popular opinion was that number 42 was the favorite, but for me it was this guy. I love this. I love it. Um, let's see, what else? Okay, Brightest Bloom. Now, let's talk about the Bath & Body Works single fragrance launches that they've been doing lately. Really nice wraparound label on this guy. Um, what kind of wicks? We've got the Thin Core wicks. So hopefully it will have some strength and throw to it. And this is, to me, a very like white floral balanced with sort of a creaminess. The scent notes are Lily of the Valley, Jasmine Sandback, Garden Carnations, and Fresh Cedarwood. Now Jasmine Sandback I think is usually referred to as Arabian Jasmine. And it's got sort of a sweet, musky, freshy, floral vibe to it. What I get the most from this though is like a creamy white floral. And it's definitely not groundbreaking. It's nothing ingenious for Bath & Body Works, but it, it smells like it's actually going to perform well and have some strength and throw because when it comes to the Bath & Body Works like single release fragrances lately, they have not been doing well. Like at the beginning of the year, we had Calypso Clementine, which was very sweet and faint. I didn't even buy one. And then we had Tropidelic, which I loved, but the candle smelled so faint that I never actually ended up getting the candle. I did get the hand soap and I loved using it. I thought it was a beautiful fragrance, but just not strong enough for me to want the candle. And then there was um, Daffodil Daydreams, which I adored that scent. And so I also got the hand scent, the hand soap 
of that scent, but I didn't get the candle because the candle smelled so weak, you know? And I just don't have time. I'd rather a candle um, surprise me and assault me with a strong presence than me having to like <laughs> sniff around the room to figure it out. And so maybe this will break the cycle of really weak single fragrance releases from BBW, but I'm not sure. I just kind of wanted to pick one up because it's the latest thing, you know, couldn't help myself. Every now and then I succumb to the pressure and the marketing and the hype of things like this. Uh, what else did we have? We had the wedding collection. So I smelled um, dressed in white, which really didn't appeal to me. It seemed like a very generic floral, um, generic floral and, and, and weak. You know, didn't smell like a candle that was really gonna project. And that was the, um, the dressed in white was like the bride's candle. And then they had the groom's candle, which was called First Sight. And this one I really like. This one surprised me. I will absolutely buy the cologne mist of this if it comes out. I ain't getting married anytime soon, but Bath and Body Works, mm, you've suckered me into this. It's not very often that a Bath and Body Works scent comes out that I want to get like the body care for. Um, I really love that they released the Mahogany Coconut Cologne Mist uh, last season. And I wore that a lot. And I think that next time I'm in there, I might pick up whatever cologne mist or body spray or whatever they have of this scent because I'm in love with it. Um, the scent notes are Italian bergamot, rich woods, and sugared musk. And the scent notes definitely scream men's cologne, right? I mean, you don't get much more men's cologne than bergamot and musk, but there's something special and airy and a little bit fruity about this one. And it's not a super duper masculine candle, which you think it would be, you know, getting paired with the female equivalent dressed in white. I was expecting this to be much more strong and cologne -y. I've been seeing a lot of comparisons to Baccarat Rouge, which is a perfume that I think I might have smelt years ago, but I haven't smelt for a really long time. But this scent is layered and special to me. I like this one a lot. And I think that this is also one that could be burned in any season, although I'm probably going to be firing it up pretty quick. Not the most exciting um, jar here, you know, just a text box. Um, but I like it. I like it a lot. I like it a lot. I like it a lot. I'm excited for this one. Um, and then what else did I get? Oh, yeah. Okay, so this one, this is my favorite one of the whole bunch by quite a bit and you know before I went into the store I wasn't really that sure what I was gonna get but I was not expecting to like this one this one is blush amber and peony another really beautiful floral wraparound label and it's a dark label which I like because it suits the scent Ooh, this one hit me over the head when I was in the store and I looked at one of the sales associates and I was like, oh yeah, this is it. This is the one. Um, the notes are sweet peony, warm musk, and golden pear. Now peony, I get for sure because peony is a very sort of rosy, citrus, spicy scent note usually. And there's definitely sort of a rose component to this one. And I mean, after having been in the store and smelling through the whole Bridgerton collection and all of the different florals they had, this one, the second I put my nose to it, I was like, yes, this is the one. This is a dark, dark floral. 
and the musk is what's giving it sort of a powdery feel. Now, it's not powdery in the way that like luminous or Japanese cherry blossom, it's not that powdery. It's like a dark, deep powdery vibe. Um, I'm trying to think, Dark Kiss? I think it might be Dark Kiss that I want to compare this to. But anyways, Peony, absolutely. Warm Musk I get, and then Golden Pear. Don't you love it when they do a scent note like Golden Pear? Um, Golden Pear isn't really a thing, but what I think they're trying to signal by listing Golden Pear is Amber. I'm definitely getting like a deep, resinous, ambery vibe from this from this candle, more so than pear. I almost think that they just didn't want to say, they just, they didn't want to just say peony, musk, and amber, because that would sound too basic. So it's sweet peony, warm musk, and golden pear. But that golden pear I'm interpreting is an amber. Mmm, very deep, very resinous. So I love this one the second that I smelled it in the store. And then when I brought it home, I smelled it again. And I was like, I need to get another one of these. And so I went back to the Bath & Body Works store that I had been at the day before. And they had stacks and stacks of these candles that are sort of in this collection. I think there was also sugared lemonade and champagne toast. And so I went back there to pick up another one of these and it was gone. And I said to the manager there who I always talk to and she like, she gives me the hookup. And I was like, do you have any more of that blush, amber and peony? And she said, no. And I thought to myself, oh my God, this is the one that's getting popular and standing out and is selling out. And so the store that I was at that day was a very low volume store. Um, and so I drove across the city to a different mall to the Bath and Body Works there to get a second one of these. I need a backup. I haven't even burned it yet, but I can tell you that I think this one is gonna have some strength and throw. It is quite perfumey, but it's really nicely balanced. It's got thick rope-like wicks on it, which, sometimes can be the kiss of death, but they usually perform okay, at least for the first two thirds of the candle. But this to me, this is, as far as spring at Bath and Body Works went this year, this is my favorite by far. I just adore it. And so yeah, that was my sort of spring candle haul. Um, from Bath and Body Works. And this is my first video here at All About Candles. I am hoping for this to be a space where I can talk a little bit more about acquiring candles when you're in Canada. Because when you live up here, there are ways to get your hands on Yankee, Homeworks, um, Kringle, except you need to know what to do. And you need to be prepared to spend maybe a little bit more money than you'd like. And so I'm hoping that this channel will sort of attract a Canadian following um, and we can like share tips and tricks about how to get our candles up here. But I'm also just gonna be rambling on about candles, no matter where you live in the world, you know, we'll, we'll kiki and um, burn some candles and bitch about them. My um, candle obsession started when I was a wee little boy. <laughs> no, I was probably like 12. And I had a friend whose mother would always burn a gigantic Yankee candle in the kitchen. And so whenever I went over to this friend's house, um, I was supposed to be downstairs playing Goldeneye on Nintendo 64 with my friends, but I would often be much more interested in talking to my friend's mom about the candle that she was burning in the kitchen. Ever since then, I've been a big candle person. Um, I'm hoping that I will be uploading around three times a week. What I'm gonna mostly be doing are candle hauls, candle reviews, and sort of weekly wax recaps. Um, a lot of the candle YouTubers that I love are, you know, Bonnie from Queen of the Girl Geeks. I love Sean from Hearthside. 
uh, Kent from the Candle Channel, obviously. Um, Melanie, Mr. Kong's mom, I watch her a lot. This Guy Shops, Tina Marie. I've been watching all these people's videos for years. Ooh, gotta give a shout out to my girl Sarita at uh, Coffee and Candles. She's a little bit, uh, she's one of the newer YouTubers that I've become really obsessed with lately. And so I'm, I'm anticipating that what I end up doing is gonna be sort of an amalgamation of like what all my other favorite YouTubers have done. You know, hopefully there's space for everyone and I won't just be screaming into the void. So if you could give me a like, a comment, and a subscribe, it would be greatly appreciated. Um, I think for my next videos, I'm gonna get some candle reviews up this week and I'm going to do a haul of sort of random candles I've acquired over the last couple of weeks from Homeworks, Yankee, Voluspa, DW, and yeah, I just really hope that, um, I really hope I'm not just screaming into the void forever and that maybe two or three people are gonna watch me and uh, interact with me. Um, and so yeah, until next time, let's uh, burn some candles and bitch about it. Thank you for joining me. Bye-bye.